What's up, beautiful people? And uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Black Business Booming. Excited for this segment uh, to continue to give a lot of Black businesses that are doing some great things, this platform and this space to just share some of the behind the scenes stuff and just all about their business. So I'm excited. This has been a vision of mine and I'm so glad I'm fastly approaching 25 episodes. That's 25 amazing entrepreneurs and business minds out here doing some great things. So I'm excited. And also I say this every interview, everyone has been someone I know or I'm connected to in some way. So it's just, it's amazing, man. I'm so excited. I have another awesome guest today. Uh, so sis, let everybody know your name and where you're from and we'll dive into it. Hey everybody, my name's Maria. Um, I'm originally from California and I uh, own Jars of Joy Essentials. And what that is, is it's a natural um, plant-based uh, business. Or yes, it is a business, but um, I did make uh, handcrafted body products for pretty much everybody. Um, it was inspired by my family, my uh, my kids and my husband. They all have very different uh, skin conditions and level of dryness and stuff like that. So I had to really figure out a way to meet all their needs and also be in charge of what I put on their skin. So um, I kind of over the years have worked on different recipes and tried different things out to see what was going to work for everybody. And along came Jars of Joy. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, so, and that kind of goes into that next question about just the inspiration to do to start your business, uh, because I think that's awesome. And the fact that it's, it's natural, um, you know, everything you're doing, that's huge as well, because a lot of times we're putting all kinds of stuff on our skin Man. and our kids, oh, <laughs> checking ourselves up. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, what's funny is, is like, um, growing up, I remember seeing a lot of people use, uh, and I don't want to say their name, but, um, um, but it's the brand with the bird on it. And people don't realize how terrible it is for your skin. And so um, I remember when I was pregnant with my daughter, somebody gave me like a whole, like their baby line or whatever. And I was like, this is, this like, this is just as bad as the adult brand, you know? So um, for me, what started is my husband, he has, eczema and really really dry skin and so I just remember I'd say probably like year maybe year three I rem I remember sitting he sent me to the store to go get some lotion I was like what do you want and he was like I don't know just find me something that works and I started thinking like okay he always sends me to the store to get lotion it's always find me something that works but it never works and so, like, after after years of, like, buying everything on the lotion aisle, I was just like, oh, okay, there's there's got to be something out here for him. And, and so, I had a friend who started a natural hair care line, and this was right after we had our daughter, and I couldn't find anything for her hair at all that worked, and... So I was like, okay, well, let me check out her products and see what she has. And so she gave me, she recommended a couple of things and it was amazing. It was all natural. And I was like, okay, well, if this is working for my daughter and it's all natural, why can't I come up with something to help my husband? So it started off with, you know, just me trying different things, trying to figure out like what worked with his skin type and, um, you know, what wasn't too heavy, too greasy and stuff like that. And so I ended up finally coming up with a recipe that worked really well. And that was what, that was about five years ago. And since then we've been using my products and even for my daughter and now I have a son, I, I make all our body products and stuff. And so it's just been a blessing because I control what goes on my family skin. Right. I know what's going into it. You know, I know how, uh, how it affects them, you know, and then there's the seasonal changes, everything, your skin changes with the season. A lot of people don't realize that, that they need to change their moisturizer in the season mm. when the change 
And so they'll, you know, still use Jergens in the winter and that's not really going to get it. And so it's, it's been, it's been a challenge, but I feel like I've done really well because I've been able to like reach out to my friends and say, Hey, you know, do you have any skin issues that you want to address? And they'll tell me and I'll find something, I'll make something for them and I'll, you know, give it to them to test out and try it. And, and it's, and it's gone really well. And so I was just happy that, you know, I was able to get the blessing of my friends and my family and, um, you know, just to take it a little further and try to reach everybody. That's awesome. So, I mean, that that's great because a lot of times inspiration for business and entrepreneurship is meeting a need, right? And it starts mm-hmm. a lot of times personal. And so that's great that you were able to do that and kind of put that research in to come up with something that works. Um, yeah. That's amazing. So, you were you mentioned is that when you started the business about five years ago? Um, you were saying when you started so doing your own products. I started. I started um, the business officially in 2018, but unofficially, I started it in 2016. So um, it was just kind of like you know as needed or. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have people, you know, I don't, I don't know what to get somebody. You got any idea? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I have some jars of joy here. You can hand out to your friend. And so it just kind of went that way. Um, But I really, I, for me, it was the um, being able to work with a diverse, um, um, a diverse array of clients. Right. So, you know, I got to, I got people who have really, really dry skin. I have people who don't have dry skin, but they just have like, you know, certain needs or, you know, that is what really kind of like took it for me because then I got, it kind of piqued my interest. Like, okay, I know it works over here, but let me figure out what works over here. So I, I kind of took my time with it, but officially we started in 2018. It's awesome. So in starting Jars of Joy and, and kind of going through that process of getting started, what was, what was one of the uh, or some of the challenges that you face or the biggest challenges to overcome in starting the business? If, you're, if you go back to think of 2015 and 2016 when you were getting ready to launch this, what was one of the biggest challenges in starting? Oh, I would say for me, it was kind of like the discipline was the biggest because there were so many life changes going on for me around that time. And I was like, okay, I really want to do this, but I kind of was letting everything else get in the way of it. So I think, I think for me, I would have to say it's the discipline and the focus because life, you know, you get so busy and, and it seems like when you think you're finally in a good place to really focus on something outside of your norm, of course, that's when everything kind of like jumps in and, and just, goes overboard but what you have I I would say what ended up working for me was I just had to really decide if this was something that I really wanted to do and figure out a way to do it you know um but definitely for me it's for me and a lot of people life kind of gets in the way and you have to make a decision like are you going to work on trying to improve your life and um, take these steps to have your own, or are you just kind of let it sit on the wayside and go to waste? You know, everybody has a talent. And for me, the most difficult part was being able to focus and stay disciplined and, and focus on the picture. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that, man, that's a gem for for people yeah. and, and that'll go to that advice too of of that discipline because it's about not only knowing what you want to do but saying okay here's what it's going to take for me to do that and for me to right. see it through and make something of it um and it's not just wasting your time and everybody around you you know because right. for entrepreneurs and for business you're doing if you're a small business and you're running a, a business you're an entrepreneur it affects you and everyone around you as well exactly how you operate yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's awesome yeah so and now starting the business if if we look at 
these years from then to now and running your business on an everyday basis, what are some of the day-to-day -day challenges that you face or some of the things that come up and it's, you know, Ooh. may catch you off guard or <laughs> some of those things? Uh, for, okay, so day-to-day, -day, um, so I'm married, I have two kids, so I'm busy all the time um, and I work full-time. I work for a logistics, a logistics company, I work from home. And um, really, it's time management is probably the biggest hurdle because, you know, you have to balance your household, you have to balance your work if you have other work. You know, I, I pray that I'm able to, you know, go 100% jars of joy in the next year or two. Um, but right now, it's spreading out my time to equally balance everything that I have going on. Um, but I will say that um, starting and, and taking the time out to like organize and um, list are amazing. Like, so I, sometimes you just have so much going on. You need a list that you can check off and say, okay, I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. I need to do this or this still hasn't gotten done. And it kind of helps you focus. But for me, my everyday challenge is going to be time management. I mean, I'm, I'm really good at getting my orders out and, and getting them to my customer on time. That is my main priority. Um, but it's, you know, do I want to stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning tonight? Do I want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to work on this? So it's really, it, it really boils down to time management for me. Um, but I mean, I'm working on it. I'm getting better at what I've started doing is making my batches in the beginning of the week. So that way, as the orders come in through the week, I can just fulfill them, put them in the mail and be done. So that's been the best thing for me. Um, but my other challenge that I'm currently trying to overcome is social media engagement. <laughs> right. I'm, first of all, I'm the worst texter you'll ever meet. Like, I'm the yes, no. If it takes okay. sentences, I'm going to call. Like, I can't. I'm so busy. Like, I can't sit here and, and, and text a novel to you, you know? Like, call me. Let's talk about it. Right. Three minutes, we're done, you know? So that's kind of been a, been a struggle for me, but I'm working on it. I have um, a really awesome mentor. Her name is Kami. Um, she uh, runs a marketing consulting company, and it's called Idea uh, Consulting. And she's really helped me along the way, just kind of gave me the steps that I needed um, and, and helped me plan out my social media posts and stuff like that. So it's been really helpful. Oh, yeah, time management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's, man, that's huge because I, I say it often, if not in every interview, especially as I've, as I've done more of these, is I go back and watch these because it's study for myself. Mm -hmm. And w another reason why I encourage people to go back and look at other interviews because there's a common theme. And I yeah. promise you, time management comes up, right? And, oh, and man, especially like building a business. <laughs> <laughs> right. Time management. And then one thing you said that I think was in the last interview I did was that list and actually being able to check off things yes. of that list, that progress. Because one yes. thing I say in my coaching when I'm working with clients too is, okay, have you, have you wrote that down? When you write things down and you physically check that, that brings more space and more energy to do something else. And satisfaction, right? Because yes. so I use this, this app and, and I also used it online too. It's called Asana and you can create your tasks on it. And I, and honestly, like I really hate virtual calendars, but this has worked so well for me because I can just go in there. And as soon as I have the thought, like I'll open it and I'll type it in there. And then once a week, once or twice a week, I'll go in there and be like, okay, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this? And it's been really helpful to see it, but I think we kind of get like so overwhelmed with all these different apps. Mm -hmm. that want to like try something new, but for, Somebody who has been a procrastinator most of their life, Asana has really done well for me. <laughs> it's been a great tool and a benefit because I can pull it up and be like, okay, I didn't touch that. I need to work on this by Friday. 
and it's and it's just made my life as an entrepreneur a lot easier because I'm I'm able to just get in get out you know it's real quick and you can probably do it on the calendar on your app but honestly like the calendar on the app doesn't or on your phone really just doesn't do it for me like I yeah. need to actually see a list so right. yeah right list they it really does help at least try it I mean if you want to write it down, I lose paper. I have kids. My son eats paper, so paper doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Using the app is a great. It, it really is beneficial. Yeah, that's awesome. And that that's part of that. Uh, that's also part of figuring out what works for you. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Everybody operates and just navigates differently on a day-to-day yeah. basis. So when you find what can work and give you that space to be productive and to grow. Yes. Oh, Yes, <laughs> you know, so that's awesome. So in contrast now to those day-to-day challenges, what are what are what is that thing that makes it all worth it? You know, what are some of the more satisfying parts of being in being running that business and being an entrepreneur? For me, so recently I've kind of gotten in a space with working for somebody else that I've just come to the realization that it doesn't work for me, you know? And um, I've always been the hard worker, the one to really focus on, you know, what I want to do or, you know, moving up and learning new things. And I've kind of gotten to a space where I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm working and I'm learning, but I'm also doing it to survive, right? but I'm not doing anything to contribute to my own dynasty, you know? Mm. And my husband is really big on uh, multiple streams of income and, and things like that. Um, he's currently working on um, starting his own wine, um, his own winery and stuff like that. But for me, it's been knowing that I don't have to clock in and out one day. That really just inspires me. I can get up in the morning and hang out with my kids and don't have to worry about my phone ringing because somebody didn't get whatever they needed or whatever the case may be. I, and I think that's a, a big thing for a lot of people now. You know, we realize as we get older, we're spending so much time dedicating ourselves to other places and other people and other company that it doesn't truly benefit what we have going on in our household um i've i spend i don't know a lot of my time probably working 13 14 hour days and not realizing that that's taking time away from my kids you know Mm -hmm. my daughter she and she's she's amazing but she also wants her mommy you know my son he he doesn't understand that i'm working so he likes to crawl underneath my desk and take the printer paper out of the printer and stuff like that. He's only one, you know, but it's those things that remind me that my end game is to be able to focus on my kids and Mm -hmm. and be the parent that I would have wanted if my mom wasn't, you know, working 50 60 hours a week you know i don't i don't want my kids to miss out on me and i don't want to miss out on my kids because i'm so focused on helping somebody else build their dynasty so for me that is my biggest thing like i just want to be available i want to be able to go do what i want to do when i want to do it um and those kind of things i i think we're getting to a place now where um, as minorities, we're starting to establish ourselves and step away from corporate America because it's always going to be there. You know, you can step out on the limb and try your business. And if it doesn't work, you can go back to corporate America. Right. You know, it, I, I'd even be willing to work part time. But for me, I would just like to be able to focus more on my family and get back to focusing on myself as well. You know, there's so many different areas that I have to keep my eye on a lot of times you end up forgetting about yourself when you're working and being a parent and um right now we have everybody has become a teacher that's a lot you know Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to be a teacher and not be working at the same time so um for me my end game my inspiration is to just be able to support and and take care of my family the way I want to for sure 
Yeah, that's huge. And it's something you said where, you know, you're working. The, the thing about it, if you have a job, if you are employed, um, and again, it's not a knock to anyone who does that, right? Because right. here's a, here's another re- reality of entrepreneurship. It is not for everyone. No, it's not. It's, and it's not for the weak hearted at all. <laughs> right. It's not. And it's a risk. It's a big risk too, you know, mm-hmm. but if you do it right and you focus and you take care of people, the universe will pay you back. Right. Yeah. I love that. And that's, that's what's so, uh, again, what's so good about it because if you are employed, as long as you're working a job, you are helping accomplish someone else's dream, someone exactly. else's end game. I love that exactly. word you use. You know, I'm helping you every time I clock in, I'm clocking in another moment, another block of my time to right. help you and your end game. So exactly. I think that was the driving force for me, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and okay, Mike, you have to do this and you have to work on all of this stuff now because you want to work on your dreams, your goals, you, you know, right. your aspirations. So I think that's big. And so that kind of goes into that next question of advice for uh, entrepreneurs. I think this whole interview, you've been given some gems too with advice because mm-hmm. you talked about that discipline, you know, that time management. And really w- one that I'll just throw in there is thinking about what your end game is. Like, what do you yeah. really want to do? What do you want to see? You know, why? Your why? I think we talk about that often, finding your why. Why is it? What is it that you want to do? And what's your why? What's going to be that thing that pushes you on those days where it's like, you know what, not going to happen. <laughs> so in, in terms of thinking about advice, again, on top of all of the advice you, you've been given in this interview, what is some advice that for someone who either they want to start a business or they're thinking about entrepreneurship, they're on the, the cusp and, you know, just looking at, okay, I'm a young black man, black woman, I, you know, I'm just minority here. What's some advice that you would give to that person that's thinking about it or they want to get into business? So my first um, recommendation would be to monitor your surroundings and and associate yourself who want to do more because that's important. Um, for me, I've always had really good people in my life. I mean, we all have had bad people in our lives, but I've already, I've always had inspirational people in my life. And for me, starting this process, it really helped to, um, talk to people and pick people's brains about, you know, what things they've run into, um, what do they recommend when, you see this or, you know, I feel like networking and changing your environment as far as who you're dealing with. Uh, make sure you're spending your time and your energy talking to people who want more. You know, um, definitely if you're hanging out with a, a barrel full of crabs, you definitely want to change that because that's one of the things that people struggle with too when they become an entrepreneurship. It's like, okay, I know this person, this is my friend or this is my aunt and they want a discount and you feel guilty because it's like, oh, these are my folks and I want to do this and yeah, you can get, but you're taking away from yourself. And so you have Mm -hmm. to really focus on, okay, if your goal is to make a hundred thousand a year, right? you can't do that giving discounts to everybody. You're going to have to disconnect from some of those personal relationships. And when you find people that will only buy from you because you're giving them a discount, remember that you're taking away from yourself and you are giving them more, but taking away from yourself. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I get, I get it that, you know, some people are money conscious or some people might not have enough, but people will really spend money on stuff they really want to. There you go. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and that's why I say you got to change your circle. You know, if you're hanging out with people that don't really um, support you or are heading in the same direction. And I'm not saying like 
only hang out with entrepreneurs. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying people who want more or people mm -hmm. who don't mind learning or people who maybe have access to different circles um, of networking or life experiences, stuff like that. That's what you want. You want to be able to grow and you want to be able to be diverse and um, reach out to different places. You want people you want to be around and, and, and learn from people who are constantly open to new and change. Yeah. That makes all the difference. Um, for me, I joined a lot of um, business groups online and stuff like that. Um, so I can ask questions if I ran into different things, um, look for suggestions or, you know, if I wanted to, try a couple of different things out, kind of throw, you know, my, my ideas out there. And it's amazing that you'll find that you'll get more of an honest response from a stranger than you will from somebody, you know, mm -hmm. you know so for me that it was really important that I make sure that I know where to focus my attention and what I'm listening to and what energy that I'm pulling in when I'm trying to focus on becoming an entrepreneur and growing my business and doing what I want to do. So um, that definitely pay attention to who you're around and read. If you can be on Facebook, if you can be on Instagram, liking pictures, you can be looking up steps, how to start your business. And you don't have to do it all at one time, you know, um, right. I, I, when I first started Jars of Joy down in Florida, um, I spent, I don't know, like $600 getting it started on Zoom. Uh, is it legal Zoom? Yeah, legal Zoom. And when I moved here, because you can't, you can get a, um, uh, oh God, what is it? Domestic LLC or anyway, the, I, I don't remember the terminology, but when you move to a different state, you have to make sure that your um, that your corporation or whatever is also registered in the state you live. And I almost paid that again until I was talking to my friend who was working on starting her business. And she was like, look, I'll tell you what forms you need. All you got to do is fill it down, expect to spend an hour at the courthouse, and you'll save like 500 bucks. And I, and I almost paid, I almost paid the money to them again. Right. But it was just that one conversation and me being open with, I don't know where to start or I don't know where, you know, going to the courthouse, what paperwork I need and all of that. Like it was me being open about what I was struggling with or what I didn't know. And, and somebody in my circle was like, look, I just went through this. Here's what you need. Go do this and you'll be set. And I did it. I she she told me what I needed. I filled out all the paperwork. I went down there, and I wasn't even in there an hour, and I saved five hundred dollars. You know, and that's why I say it's really important who you're dealing with, who you're talking to, and you know the network that you have around you because just having a conversation with people can save you money or can put you in the right space. And you know, if you don't have the money all together now save a little bit here and, you know, $20, $50 out of your paycheck and, you know, put that in the pot for when you can pay to get your LLC, then you go pay your, you know, you got that. Just focus on what you do, what you want to do, make a list and, and just do what you got to do to get there. You don't have to have it all done at one time. Everybody's not able to just go out and start a business in two days. For me, it took time for me because I had to test my recipes, which means that I spent money, but I was willing to take the risk and lose the money as long as I was able to reach out to people and get honest feedback from them. Um, so it really is just, I mean, there's so many different levels, but mainly get in the right headspace, find the right people, make your list and do what you got to do to check it off. Yeah, that's awesome. And like in all of that, that I hear, it's two things that just come to mind for me is foundation and environment. Yes. Like that foundation of putting in the work, like you talked about reading and doing that research on what you're doing, you know, making that list and then 
huge part of that is environment. Like check the people you around. Yes. Are you the most driven person in your circle? Then that may not be the circle for you, especially exactly. when wanting to start a business. And then like you said, networking, joining these professional organizations, that's part of that environment where you're in a place where you can grow. You know, you're not seeing this beautiful, these beautiful rose patches and rose bushes in the desert because <laughs> that's not the environment right. for them. So I think that is huge, a huge takeaway in that advice, you know, uh, getting that foundation there and putting in the time and right. then your environment, like who, what are you feeding? You even talked about, you know, what you're listening to and, and what you're reading. So what are you feeding yourself? That, that makes a, that makes a whole world of difference in terms of be going back to what you said before, being disciplined enough to, to, you know, be an entrepreneur and to be in business, um, especially in those the beginning phases of that. Right. Uh, so that's, that's absolutely, I would agree with that 100%. Uh, so in thinking of, in thinking about moving forward, what's next for Jars of Joy? What, what's on the horizon? What's in the, the windshield moving forward? <laughs> Man, so much. I have so many ideas and so many things I want to try. Um, but for me, my, my ultimate goal is to be able to show up at farmer's markets and um, show up at like conferences and stuff like that. I, I, I would prefer to mainly stay online. Um, and I'm not really in a place where I feel like I want to like brick and mortar. Um, right now I kind of, I kind of like the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of like just being able to do everything on my time and just being able to focus that way um, and keep everything in-house. But for me, it's just being able to pop up and also being able to to introduce people to skincare and letting them know like your body needs more than water and your body needs, your, your skin, it's your largest organ, you know, your largest organ on your body. And it's mm -hmm. one of the most important because people don't realize, like, if you have dry skin, you're, you absorb everything around you, you know, your, the toxins in the air, and you want to keep that organ in the best condition possible. You don't want to look like you're 60 when you're 45. And uh, <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing for everybody right now. But for me, it would just be able to, you know, pop up everywhere and people know who I am, know what I offer and know that they are getting a genuine product. You know, one of my my biggest points in my business is that I provide clean beauty and also honest ingredients. And um I don't ever, I want people to know like they're getting good, clean stuff when they get stuff from me. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much where I am right now. I just want to be able to kind of like step out of my shell and, and go to these different places and experience these different markets and things like that. So, yeah, that's awesome. I am, I'm excited for, uh, where the business is going and just seeing, you know, as you were saying that with your, the process that you have in place and how you approach everything, you know, just physically saying, okay, yeah, Maria, she's out here today, you know, where you can yeah, go and support you know it and have that. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I want you to just take a moment to uh, tell people how they can find Jars of Joy and any information that you want the people to know about the business and uh, anything else that you have. Okay. Um, so I'm on Instagram, uh, Jars of Joy Essentials. Um, and I'm also on Facebook. We are currently working on our YouTube channel and our Pinterest board. Um, and we'll be going live um, this week. And you can find us at uh, jarsofjoy.com. Um, and oh, one of the things that I kind of forgot to touch on, um, one of the things that I do offer, which I absolutely love, um, is I offer custom customization of your skincare products. So like right now, I'm only offering customizable body butters and we'll expand that later on in the future. But 
um, I have my set eight different body butters, but let's say you want, you know, something different or you might want to exchange the oil for something else or a different additive or anything like that. You have the option to go in there and create your own body butter. Um, and it's, for me, I think that's really important because you want to find something that works for you. And a lot of times you'll find products in, um, you'll find a product that you really like, but you might like not like one particular thing about it. Well, here with Jars of Joy, you have the option to change that. You have the option. To, okay. I don't think I like coconut oil in my body butter, so I want it with that or whatever the case may be. I try to open that up to my customers because I want them to know, you know, look, I care about what you want. You tell me what you want and I'm going to get that for you. So, um, but yeah, um, I forgot to say that earlier. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. I think that was kind of the perfect place to put that because that's that's good to know too because people, you know, it may be a certain business of skincare line that they like and it's like, you know what, I wish I could change this or that. And so with Draws right. of Joy, that's something that you provide. So I think that's awesome uh, to know that. Maria, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. I'm glad to um, just put, you know, highlight this awesome business and also just to learn more, because again, like I say, every one of these interviews, it just gives me more insight into not only entrepreneurship and business, but to the people who I'm meeting and having the opportunity to have these interviews with, to know more about their business. And, you know, again, people see a business and they don't see the process. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the behind the scenes part of everything going on. And they think like, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You see that person, I'd walk up, like you see all these different vendors, and I'd be like, okay, they're just out here. And then and then like when I really finally got to the point where I was like, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur, I was like, dang, I can't even imagine what went into all of that. You know, you've mm -hmm. got to get your banners and your tin and your table, you gotta get all that together. And there's so many things that happen before you can even get there. You right. know, so that's a great point. And I appreciate you having me on here and um, talking about, you know, all the different things that um, it takes to become an entrepreneur. And it's, it's really good to be able to just have open dialogue for people who are looking to start. I mean, it's important. And then, you know, with there being so many different businesses that you've talked to, everybody can kind of like it an idea of what direction they want to go into and, you know, different points and stuff. So I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you for doing it. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing too. Uh, when I said this is, I don't want to just be in one facet of business yeah. interviewing people, but you know, there's been artists, there's been people in the financial sector, people, nonprofits, different things. Um, you know, so I, I think that's good because now it's really creating that book of entrepreneurship like you know what wait a minute yeah episode 10 or episode 11 was someone who's in baked goods you know this person was in skincare this person is in hair care so i think that is really just creating this whole uh buffet line <laughs> of areas where people can look at so yeah definitely i love it um of course i'm going to put all the information where you can find out more about jars of joy in the description um i encourage you to continue to like share subscribe comment yes. and we will see you next time on another episode of black business booming peace all right bye <laughs>